Hey everybody. Hi there. Well, this uh, episode, the travel episode, is about Mackinac Island. Wonderful place. It was, definitely. But probably not such a great place to take a dog to. That's true, and you'll see why. Yeah. And uh, if you don't know what pasties are, stick around to the end of the video and you'll know. And trust me, if you can get a hold of one, you're probably going to like it. Yes, absolutely. Those things were awesome. So I hope you enjoy it. And uh, if you do, please consider subscribing. Anyway, here we go. See ya. Bye. Hi, I'm Sandy. And I'm Ed. And this is General, our totally awesome water dog. We used to live on the Outer Banks of North Carolina, but one day we found both of ourselves unemployed. So we decided to take a chance. We sold everything, bought a trailer, and left to explore America. We're learning as we go along, but we still make mistakes. But we get a lot of things right, too. So come join us as we learn to RV full-time, explore America, and share in our exciting journey of discovery. Our, our next adventure, adventure is just over the hill. So this is probably a pretty good example of what most of Michigan looks like that we've driven through. <laughs> a lot of road, a lot of trees. <laughs> A house here and there, a commercial building once in a while, but this is pretty much it. And we're not complaining. It's been awesome. So calming and peaceful um, on a travel day that we generally can't stand travel days. So it's been awesome. Yeah, it's good. We are on our way to St. Agnes in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. And in order to get to St. Agnes, we have to cross the Mackinac Bridge, which is also known as Mighty Mac. And Mighty Mac is a wonderful feat in engineering. It's actually the fifth longest suspension bridge in the world and the longest suspension bridge in the Western Hemisphere. The length of the suspension part of the bridge is 8,614 feet and the total length of the bridge is five miles. So this is a pretty awesome bridge. On our first day of exploring, we got on the ferry to go over to Mackinac Island. And uh, the ferry was just getting ready to leave when we had bought our tickets, so we were like the last ones on board. And when I looked at you know, the available seating and everything, there weren't any seats left available for the, the, for the three of us, for Ed and I in general. So we kind of stood back in the cargo hold, which wasn't a big deal. Um, in general's first experience on a boat ever. He's never been on a boat before until this day. And uh, he handled it pretty well, just maybe a little on the skittish side, but he, he seemed to relax pretty well. Of course, as you're coming up on the island, you can see the Grand Hotel. It is just absolutely huge. It's a beautiful hotel been looking forward to seeing this for quite some time and uh, on the right hand side coming in you can see the Round Island Lighthouse this is really cute and on this particular day we were lucky enough to see a schooner out in the harbor going out for a ride so we made it over to the island just fine and immediately started looking for bike rentals um, for Ed and I and we were going to get like a trailer type thing a, a tag along or a pull along for General to sit in, but much to our surprise, they didn't have anything available that would fit him because he's, you know, he's a big dog. He's about 80 pounds. Um, they do have carriers uh, for, for dogs that are 50 pounds and under. And this was kind of a bummer for us because we had read a blog um, that said that there was no problem taking your pet over there. You wouldn't have any issues and everything. So it was a little bit of a dis disappointment for us that we couldn't find a carrier for general. Um, so we started walking around town and uh, we're enjoying the view and taking our pictures and everything. And it didn't take long before we were all just so tired. I think we were only there maybe an hour. Um, walking around and we decided that this what really wasn't working um, so we went back to the ferry and 
went back home. But we just chalked it up to being unprepared and made plans to do the trip again the next day. Um, we actually hired a sitter for general um, that would allow us to be out a little longer than you know the standard four or five hours that we leave him alone once in a while. Um, so the sitter was going to come over around five o'clock and give him his dinner and take him for a walk and play with him for a little bit. So later that evening, um, we all went downtown to St. Agnes and walked around there for a little bit to see what they had going on. It's a very pretty town in and of itself. Um, got general, general's feet wet in the water and I mean, the water is just beautiful here. It's so clear has an awesome blue tint to it. It's just amazing. And then when it started coming up on sunset, we decided to go down to Mackinac City where there is um, the Headlands Dark Sky Park. It's a registered dark sky park and we had found out about this about a month prior to this visit. So we were really excited about this because it's been a while since we got to take any sky pictures, night sky pictures. Um, so we headed over there and uh, we were getting all set up and everything and we were kind of off to the side by ourselves so it would be nice and quiet and the crowd was, you know, down a little ways and got ourselves situated right on the water and we're watching the sunset and everything and, and just as we thought we were, you know, coming up on here comes the time, we're going to start seeing the sky, we turned around and there is a full moon coming up over our shoulders. And we knew there's not going to be any dark sky tonight. That just does not happen with a full moon. So that was a little bit of a bummer, but kind of comical at the same time. We could have easily looked it up to find out that that was going to happen. And then we wouldn't have wasted our time going over there. But lack of preparation again, but comical nonetheless. No biggie. So the next day we were getting ready to go over to Mackinac Island again and we were so excited and uh, we just wanted to make sure that we had all of our stuff together so it took us a little longer to leave the house and um, get going and went the, the ferry that we caught, again, it, it was leaving right after we got our tickets. We only had a couple minutes to get on there. Plenty of seats this time. There wasn't a problem getting, getting a seat for us. Um, but this particular ferry, for whatever reason, takes a little detour and goes over underneath the Mackinac Bridge. And it, it plays this little recording with a history of the bridge, which was really awesome. You know, Ed being a mechanical engineer for so much of his life, and, and he was just fascinated with the construction of this bridge. So that was, that was an extra blessing for us that day. Okay, well we came over to Mackinac Island uh, while we were up in Michigan, traveling across Michigan, because we wanted to see what all the excitement is about. Well, look at it! Wow! This is Arch Rock on Mackinac Island. The rock is amazing. And look at the color of that water. Isn't that beautiful? So they have hiking trails up here on Mackinac Island as well. This one's called South Blodgett Trail, as you can tell. But look at the other sign. That, to me, says easiest jump for a horse. If you're going to take a horse down this trail, what do you think it means? So Sandy posed the question, what does this mean? 
I think it means it's a great place for your horse to do a wheelie. Our next stop is Sugarloaf. So Mackinac Island uh, is kind of built on these limestone deposits and from what I understand there's like a harder deposit and a softer deposit. So this um, particular anomaly here is obviously made of the harder deposit of limestone and it's just a little mountain in the middle of this island. Here's another view. Kind of hard to take pictures of this. I think you're probably just seeing a shadow from the way the light is hitting. Um, and I'm standing under a tree. I can't back up any further. So we are looking at an American flag and that flag is located at Fort Holmes, which is obviously up this huge hill. Um, there's some stairs just down the road a little bit, but we don't know if we have enough energy left to climb the stairs or not. Okay, we decided not to climb the stairs to the fort because um, it was an awful lot of stairs. But we got down around the corner here and realized we have this awesome view from down here. So there is Fort Holmes. Pretty awesome. Mackinac Island is also known for its very large summer homes. Here's the first of a few that we're going to take a look at. Um, I don't believe there's any open for tours. These are all private residences. So we're just going to get video from the outside. So you have to remember that everybody on Mackinac Island gets around either on foot or bike or by horse. So this house over here ordered some big boulders and we saw the horse drawn, you know, flatbed carriage thing go by with the stones in it and now they're trying to get them off the trailer. So that's pretty awesome. This is everyday life for these people. Gorgeous old Victorian houses. These things are just beautiful. Look at the turret where the flag's coming out. Awesome. Love these gardens. Look at this. They put a lot of work into their house. Got layers of flowers back there. This is beautiful. And another one. Curved staircase in the front. That's awesome. Look at this stuffed horse over the railing. So cute. Here's another one. Absolutely amazing. Here's a, the other side of the last house that we just went by. These houses are just amazing. Absolutely beautiful. And the lawns are all immaculate. Look at those steps they have to go up. <laughs> I think that there's probably another road on the back side um, that's more even with the level of the house. And so they probably go in the back door. Some of these houses that we're seeing, they actually have their own stables. They maintain their own horses. Um, so these folks don't just use bicycles. So this is our first view of the Grand Hotel. Um, this is one of the, the main attractions of Mackinac Island is the Grand Hotel. Here's the last couple of houses on the bluff here. Absolutely beautiful. And um, I just took a picture. You see the carriage step and the horse ties in front of that one. So that's pretty cool. After seeing the Grand Hotel, we decided to go back downtown and turn the bicycles in. And we asked the lady at the bike shop what 
place she would recommend for us to have our lunch at. And she said Mary's Bistro, the Draught House. So that's where we went and it was definitely an awesome lunch. After lunch, we decided to take a walk down Market Street on our way to see the fort. And Market Street has um, some really awesome historic buildings and most of their town buildings are on Market Street. The fort is actually quite a bit uphill, um, but the view when you're going up that walkway is absolutely amazing. Fort Mackinac was founded during the American Revolution in 1780 under the control of the British and it was finally opened as a living history museum in 1959. I'm in the top floor of one of the three-story guard houses inside the fort and it's got two cannon up here lots of peepholes for rifles it's kind of a good really good view up to the harbor this is the downstairs area with the fireplace This is actually the Quartermaster's Supply House. This is pretty awesome that they went to the trouble to put this together. Quartermaster's Supply House. And this would be um, War of 1812. For all this stuff here. Pretty awesome. So this is the old bath house. Um, I'll show you the soldiers barracks in a little bit here, but this is the bathhouse. So there's like seven stalls here in this um, building that look exactly like this. Uh, here's an example of one of the rooms in the soldiers barracks. Ah, there you go. There's your locker. That's it. Girly posters. All your kit on the wall. And this is called the squad room or orderly room. It's like making a Morse code signal. This is a first sergeant's room. He gets to be all by himself. He's got his own space. There's his chest. This is the doctor's office. And down the smallpox vaccination. This building has the officers' quarters in it. <laughs> A lot nicer than what we've seen already. There's another room. This is more of the officers' rooms. Got some games in here. There we go. Here's the tavern. Do you want whiskey or whiskey? <laughs> Uh, 
I'm sorry, they only serve beer here. <laughs> it says the post exchange. When we left the fort, we uh, walked down Market Street again on our way back to the dock where we would catch the ferry to go home. And uh, right at the last minute, I was really sucked into Reba's fudge shop. And while I was tied up, Ed decided he was going to go over to the Seabiscuit Cafe for a drink. And uh, when I went to find him later, he was sitting at the bar talking to another gentleman. And at the same time that I was sitting down next to Ed at the bar, the gentleman's wife sat down next to him at the bar and we were all talking together like we'd known each other forever. We shared with them some of our RVing stories and they shared with us some of their boating stories because they're currently on a trip around the Great Loop. Um, in uh, the eastern part of America in a trawler boat, which is also one of those things that we kind of wanted to do uh, in our lifetime. So that was so awesome talking to them. We had a great time. On our next exploring day in St. Agnes, we decided that we had to find out what pasties were. We've been seeing them advertised in certain shops around town and we, we just couldn't take it anymore. We had to know. So we went into this restaurant and ordered our pasties and Ed got the beef one and I got the chicken one and out they came. And basically what it is, it's, it's a pot pie but rolled up like a burrito so you can hold it in your hand and some people do actually eat it that way just holding on to it but we got gravy on ours because that just sounded totally awesome and um yeah it's just like a pot pie um the insides are diced really fine it's not really chunky um and it's not really sloppy with sauce it's it's more vegetables and meat than it is sauce and they were just really, really awesome. So if you guys are ever in this area, you have got to try pasties. After we had our pasties, we took General down to the waterfront again so he could get his feet wet in that beautiful crystal clear water with the blue tint that is so pretty. And later on that evening, um, Ed went downtown to take some pictures and video of the fireworks display that they have every weekend during the season and that was pretty awesome. Um, unfortunately, I didn't get to go with him because General is kind of afraid of the sound of the fireworks. So I decided it would be, well, we decided it would be best for me to stay home uh, with him so I could keep him calm down and he wouldn't freak out. So really awesome fireworks. They were beautiful. <laughs> 